Okay, so we're going to look at a really neat way of simplifying expressions the form cos x to the power of n or sin x to the power of n with the motivation that perhaps we're interested in integrating one of these functions but first we need to get it into a more manageable form to be able to do the integration. So first we'll quickly look at some more common approaches to this sort of problem before we go into our approach. So if you imagine you had a small power of n, maybe just cos squared x, then we could use our angle sum formula, or double angle formula for cos, rearrange to make cos squared x the subject, then you can express it as a half plus a half cos 2x, and this is a really nice simple function to integrate now. You could do something very similar for sin x, again using the double angle formula for cos, and we could use triple angle formulas for cos cubed or sine cubed. Another really nice approach is to use integration by parts. You imagine you're interested in integrating cos to the n x with respect to x. We could use integration by parts, where you take your u is cos to the n minus 1, and your dv dx is just cos x. Then, I won't go into the details here, but you can write this as 1 over n times cos to the n minus 1 x times sine x plus an n minus 1 over n multiplied by the integral that's now cos to the n minus 2x dx. So this is really useful because we have something we can evaluate plus an integral but where the power is now n minus 2. So we've reduced the power and you could apply the same procedure to cos to the n minus 2 over and over until you get the power small enough that you can evaluate the integral. The approach that we're going to use relies on the complex definitions of cos and sine. It's also going to use our knowledge of the binomial expansion. So cos x raised to the power of n, using the complex exponential definition, you can write this as e to the ix plus e to the minus ix, all over 2, and we raise all of this to the power of n. So taking out a factor of 1 over 2 to the n, we get a nice looking binomial, e to the ix plus e to the minus ix raised to the power of n. So we know that a binomial a plus b to the n, we can write this as the sum from k equals 0 to n, n choose k, a to the k, b to the n minus k. So here we've got a is e to the ix, and b is e to the minus ix. So we get the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k, and now it's e to the ix raised to the power of k, multiplied by e to the minus ix to the power of n minus k. So we'll have a go at simplifying these terms, and we'll see that we then get cos n x into a nice form which we'll be able to integrate. So if we look at our exponential terms, you've got e to the ix and e to the minus ix. So we'll be able to group these together into a single power of e. So ix times k, and you've got minus ix times minus k. So then we can group this into i, then you have a 2k, and there's also minus n multiplied by x. So then we can write this using e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. We'll turn this back into cos and sine now. So you get cos 2k minus n times x plus i sine 2k minus n x. So then we can use this to re-express cos to the n x as 1 over 2 to the n times our sum from k equals 0 to n, n choose k. And now we've got this nice expression cos 2k minus n x plus some imaginary parts i sine 2k minus n x. So this seems problematic, we've gained some imaginary terms, because we started with cos to the power of n, x, which is definitely a real function. So it makes sense that these imaginary parts ought to cancel out. We'll really quickly verify this. So, for example, when k is 0, you get n choose 0 times i sine, so k is 0, so it's just sine minus n, x. But then at the other end, when k is equal to n, let's add this to n choose n times i times sine when k is equal to n, you get 2n minus n, so you get nx. And you can see sine minus nx, sine nx. Because our binomial coefficients are the same, n choose 0 is the same as n choose n, these two terms just cancel because one is the negative of the other. And more generally, n choose k times i sine, so when we have k, it's just 2k minus n times x. If we compare this to the one with the same binomial coefficient, n choose n minus k, we have i sine. So then replacing k by n minus k, you get 2n minus 2k. So taking away the n from that, you get n minus 2k x. So this is indeed the negative of 2k minus n x in our argument, and the binomial coefficients are the same. 
So once again, one is the negative of each other, and the sum of these is equal to zero. The only possible problem we run into is when n is even, they don't all pair up, and you're left with one in the middle on its own, which is n choose n over 2 times i times sine. So k is n over 2, so you have 2 n over 2 minus n multiplied by x. But of course, this is just sine 0, so this is again just equal to 0. So once again, we see that all of the imaginary terms cancel, so we can get rid of this term, and we're just left with now a nice sum of cos 2k minus nx, all of which we could now integrate. Actually, some of these terms could be simplified further within our sum, so you have some repetition using symmetry of cos here, and we could reduce the number of terms in the sum further. The only difficulty there is when we have n even, there's this term in the middle that doesn't quite pair up with another term, so you'd have to split into cases where n is odd or even, or perhaps you'd introduce the ceiling function in part of your sum there. So we'll leave this as it is for cos to the power of n and move on to sine to the power of n. So now sine to the power of n is going to be slightly more complicated and we will need to split up into odd and even cases, as we'll see. But starting off, we take the same approach, e to the ix minus e to the minus ix divided by 2i is our exponential form of sine x. We raise this to the power of n, so first of all, we just take out a factor of 1 over 2i to the power of n, and then we can write e to the ix minus e to the minus ix using the binomial expansion, where it's raised to the power of n, as the sum of n choose k, and we've got e to the ix all to the power of k, multiplied by minus e to the minus ix to the power of n minus k. So now we can take 1 over 2i to the power of n, we'll simplify this a bit, into 1 over 2 to the n, and also 1 over i is just the negative of i, so we can write this as minus i to the power of n, but I'll actually write this as minus 1 to the n times i to the n, so we've split up our negative and our i there. So now we've got the sum from k equals 0 to n, we've still got n choose k. Let's take this minus 1 here to the power of n minus k and write this on its own. And then we're just left with our e to the i x term, so we're left with, just like before, e to the i, 2k minus n x. So we've got e to the i x, e to the minus i x times minus k, and e to the minus i x times n. So now there's one small piece of cancellation we can do here. We've got minus 1 to the n here, and inside we've also got another copy of minus 1 to the n, which gives you minus 1 to the 2n, or an even power of minus 1. So we can actually just get rid of these because they just contribute 1. So we're left with, on the outside, 1 over 2 to the n times i to the n. And we've got our sum now from k equals 0 to n, n choose k, minus 1 to the power of minus k. Then we'll write this in terms of cos and sine. So we have cos of 2k minus n x plus i times sine of 2k minus n x. So I'll have a go at simplifying this and seeing which terms cancel in which case where n is odd or even. So first of all, in the case where n is even, we see that i to the power of n is real, so we would expect these sine terms here with the factor of i should cancel so that we get something that's real as our sum in the end. So if we focus in on the term first of all with k and then the one where we replace k by n minus k, we want to see if these two sum to give us zero like before. So you can see the binomial coefficients n choose k is going to be equal to n choose n minus k. And minus 1 to the minus n, when n is even, is just going to give you a factor of 1, so we can ignore the n there. And then all we're left with is minus 1 to the minus k, but this is actually equal to minus 1 to the positive k. It's just the reciprocal of minus 1 or the reciprocal of 1, depending on if k is odd or even. So these two terms are both equal, and the i's, of course, are also equal, so now we just need to think about our sine 2k minus n, and when we replaced k by n minus k, once again we end up with 2n minus 2k minus n, so n minus 2k there as our factor of x. But of course this is just, the second one is the negative of the first, so 2k minus nx, here we've got sine of negative of 2k minus nx. So it's just sine theta and sine negative of theta, the sum of which is going to be zero. So we can see that each of these terms are going to cancel in pairs like before. The only difficulty now, because n is even, we do have a term in the middle which can't be paired up with anything. So it's n choose n over 2 minus 1 
to the minus n over 2 it's i times sine. So instead of 2k minus n x, it's 2n over 2 minus n times x. But of course, 2n over 2 minus n just gives us 0. So this is equal to 0. So we have sine 0, which gives us a contribution of 0 as we expected. So all of our sine terms there cancel out and just give us 0. So we can conclude that sine to the power of n, when n is even, can be written as 1 over 2 to the n so now i to the n, I'm going to write as minus 1 to the n over 2, just using the fact that i is the square root of minus 1. And then we can write our sum, we'll take this minus 1 inside in a sec, but just simplifying the sum, getting rid of the sign terms, you've got n choose k, minus 1 to the power of minus k, and all we're left with is cos 2k minus n times x. So just to give this in a slightly nicer format then, it's 1 over 2 to the n times the sum from k equals 0 to n, n choose k. So now minus 1 is being raised to a power of n over 2 minus k. And all we're left with then is a nice cos 2k minus n x term, which we could, of course, integrate if we wanted to. Now when n is odd, our i to the power of n term here on the outside of the sum is actually going to be imaginary. So you'd expect that when it multiplies by i in our sign terms, that's the real part that we perhaps want to keep, whereas the i times all of our real cos terms is still going to be imaginary. So we might expect our cos terms to disappear. So that's what we're going to verify now. So if we compare each pair, once again, you've got n choose k is going to be the same as n choose n minus k. When n is odd, minus 1 to the minus k versus minus 1 to the minus minus k, these two terms are going to be the same. But now you have a minus 1 to the minus n, where n is odd. So this is times minus 1 when compared with our previous term. Whereas our cos terms, 2k minus n versus n minus 2k, lots of x, you can see that these are actually going to be equal to each other. So you have one term plus the negative of the other, so this is indeed going to be equal to zero, and the pairs cancel out like before. And we're fortunate as well that when n is odd, you're summing from zero up to an odd number, so there is no middle term to worry about. So all of the pairs cancel, and we can conclude that all of the cos terms disappear. So then we can say that sine to the n x, when n is odd, we can write as 1 over 2 to the n. We've got i to the n, but I'm going to take out this extra factor of i, so I'll write i to the n plus 1, and now we're left with the sum from k equals 0 up to n of n choose k minus 1 to the minus k. And all we're left with now is our sine terms, so sine 2k minus n x. And we'll deal with the i as well. So we can write i to the n plus 1 as minus 1 to the n plus 1 over 2. And we'll take that inside the sum to get our final expression then when n is odd of 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum from k equals 0 up to n of n choose k minus 1 is now to the power of n plus 1 over 2 minus k multiplied by sine 2k minus n x. So this gives us a nice expression which we could integrate term by term if that was our goal for sine to the power of n x when n is odd. So we've now covered both cases. And a nice way of understanding why we've got sines here versus cosines here, and for cos to the n we had cosines there as well, is thinking about this in terms of odd and even function. So cos to the power of n, whether n is odd or even, is going to be an even function. And when n is even, sine to the power of n of x is going to be an even function. So it's going to be made up of even functions. So it makes sense that it's going to be a sum of cosines. Whereas when n is odd, sine to the nx is an odd function, so it makes sense for this to be a sum of odd functions, which is why this is made up of copies of sine.